you know, it's funny if you speak to people here about what organics mean or what it means for them. They, you know, <laughs> this one guy showed me a vineyard that was pretty fucked, but not as fucked as it could have been. But, and he was like, yeah, this one I manage organically. I do nothing. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that, that, that's not technically my definition of organics, but for him, the fact that he, you know, he basically pruned it and mowed it and did jack shit. Um, so for him, that was organic, you know, that, that was, I was like, yeah, well, okay. Um, you have to be proactive in, in, um, in, in, in regenerating the soil. It, it, it is not something that happens now naturally over a five, 10, 15, 20 year period. Yeah, yes, uh, in a thousand years it will happen. But I, I don't have a thousand years. <laughs> We compost, I mean, beyond our own smaller program, which is not that suited to distributing in vineyards because it's, it's much rougher than, than a professionally made compost. Um, though we tend to put it on by hand in the older vineyards where we can't get in with machines. Then we, um, then we sow cover crop and you get beautiful bulk of organic matter, uh, even in our conditions. Because that's also what you're trying to do is, is raise your, your bulk organic matter carbon content in your soil. So people ask me to come and fucking speak in some conference or some tasting or, or and all I'm going to talk about is compost. I mean, it's, and it's such a simple message, but it doesn't get through. <laughs> I don't want a heavy wine, you know, and I live in a hot place that's, uh, it's already the climate, even when it's cold, it's fucking heavy here. It's, you know, then it's, it's, you know, the wind is hitting you like a hammer and I, I want lightness, I want simplicity, I want uh, gentleness in, in what I drink. Not, not fucking heaviness, you know, uh, there's enough heaviness in the world. Test them out, so. I think they're a bit more flexible. I hate Syrah in this area and uh, the first f few vintages I'd make like uh, once or twice I'd tried even 100% Syrah, it was undrinkable and then I would add like 10% Muscat Petit Grain because we, we picked them at the same time uh, in the kind of idea of Viognia and Syrah and the Northern Rhone and um, 10% didn't really help, and 20%, 30%, 40%. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> fuck, probably get to 50 now. And um, and then I was like, oh, it's actually quite tasty. And uh, obviously the Syrah still dominates, but it, the Muscat comes through on the nose. But the, I drank the 20 Brutal two days ago, and uh, it reminded me of texture, some of the elements reminded me of some of the Northern Rhone Syrah I like. Um, I will sometimes find something in a particular wine that I obsess about for, for a month or two months and I drink it. Yeah, not only, but I, I will drink a bottle or two a week and um, sometimes in the same evening, but, um, but sometimes over two or three evenings. And, and I don't actually know what I'm doing, but I, I, I'm working something out. But I, I'm not necessarily very conscious of what it is. But when, it, when I feel a desire to drink a particular wine, it's because um, I've got some ideas in the back of my head and I'm hoping they're going to fall into place in some way. I used to say, when I started making like Kazart and, and, and uh, the macerated whites, I would say, yeah, I want to make uh, pale reds and, and dark whites and uh, people go whereas if you talk to someone like Moritz or of this generation they automatically think that that one should drink pale reds and dark whites so, and, uh, to some degree I mean it's it's not everyone not everyone but no I mean obviously the fuckwits don't get that but um, but but the good ones do but uh 
I, I mean, I wanted to make try making a wine in clay. The the wine we had earlier, the Romney Cazar 2012, that was my first maceration of Grenache Gris. Prior to that, and in fact, the same grapes are in this white wine. In 13, I, I couldn't make a Cazar because there wasn't enough grapes. And we went back to pressing it as a white wine. And in 13, in 12, sorry, you know, we had quite a lot of grapes and that vineyard was very mixed, but we had one section that was quite red heavy, Carignan and actually white and Macabu. And in the very beginning, I used to pick them <coughs> separately. And then I would try um, pressing everything together as a white wine. Uh, yeah, it was quite a, a very strong character. And then, and I remember I was standing with this Japanese um, sommelier who was helping us that vintage called um, Yuki. Um, and I was like, fuck man, we should just make a fucking red wine out of this. And, and he was like, absolutely, it'd be way better. And we, we picked everything and put it in the tank. And in the same way, I made my first orange wine in 2008 because we had a lot of grapes and Muscat d'Alexandri is really hard to press with a basket press and I didn't want to press any more fresh Alexandri because it, it has this fucking pulp and it's gelatinous and there's no juice comes out and you, you're pressing it and it's fucking messy and, and to clean up is a shit and you get like 200 liters for a ton and you should get like 600 liters a ton, maybe 300. It was a dry year, 2008. And I, was, I said enzymes in fermentation, the natural enzymes break down those, that pulp, the juice comes out, and it was so much easier. And I was like, I'm not going to forget this one. But at the same time, I, you know, I was like, fuck, it was pretty weird wine. It had high, quite high volatile acidity relative to the average Van de Pays um, Muscat from here. And, I was like, how am I going to sell this? Who's going to buy it? Um, am I going to have to drink it all myself? And then like the first person who came into the cellar, a wine buyer, was just like, I'll take it all. Like, well, 